Welcome back to Not A Strong Start, a podcast by filmmakers who talk movies, television, and where you can see George disagreeing with us on the daily. I'm your host. Thank you. I'm next. I'm not your host. You ain't my dad. And I'm your other guy. <laughs> Junior superstar. That is what you are. <laughs> So in this episode, we're going to be talking about legacy babies that are coming up and trying to take the crown. But first, we're going to hit you with a current event. Speaking of possible legacy, I felt that this would fit in place due to the main actor in it. So recently, as you guys have uh, seen, there has been some tidbits and some Im images coming out for the new Crow movie. I already know you guys do have some opinions on these and of these images yep. coming through. So, uh, George, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on what's been leaked so far? Or we don't even know if it's leaked. What's well, been released so far from the upcoming Crow? Yeah, because it's been official releases. I think it's already in Variety magazine. Uh, we obviously we've known we got Bill Skarsgård playing Eric Draven, and they said specifically it is Eric Draven the Crow. And visually, what we're getting, if you don't follow our Twitter, to me it, it looks like Joker freaking thug. That's what it is. He's a he's a thug from the Joker squad, but like the Jared Leto Joker. So it's not even the good Joker. Like he has tats on his face. He's got a freaking short mullet thing going on. Uh on the visual standpoint, I, I'm not feeling it. It is not looking good to me. And knowing that the director was behind films like Snow White and the Huntsman and the Ghost in the Shell movie, I don't got high hopes. Yeah, not a, not a huge success rate with uh, existing properties uh, yeah. so far. But Bill Skarsgård is great. I think he's a great actor. I'm waiting for him to kind of grow out his hair a little bit and go uh, emo, emo goth on a... Because tonight's going to be the night. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> it, I saw the same thing. I saw like the Joker with like the tattoo. And I'm like, oh, man. Like, here we go again. He, and he has short hair. Like, he looked like a meth addict, right? He looks like he's straight out of Fight Club or something like that. I like the actor. The actor's cool. We talked about on our episode before about how they haven't quite done it right in a movie form yet, right? Like, they can... There's a lot of lore to the, to the comic books that they can explore. This doesn't look like they're going down that road. So it could be a new reimagining, perhaps. We shall see. I saw the images first before I knew what it was for. And I was like, what the heck is this? And then I read it was the crow. And I'm like, what the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> I respect Skarsgård's uh, talent. He does good when, he, when he's put into a role. Uh, he does good with playing different types of characters, and you can tell he fully engrosses himself in his roles. That's the positive. I don't, I don't think we're gonna get a bad performance from him. Hopefully, the the look is the least of our issues when it comes to this. Maybe everything else works, and they can make us overlook what they decided as their aesthetic design for the crow. I'm staying optimistic because of Bill. And I think he's gonna shine through the original one. If you if you if you think about it, and a critical aspect is not a great movie. But it was entertaining. So if I can at least get that from this, where it entertains me, maybe gives me a bit. Brandon Lee wasn't exactly the greatest actor in that first one. Uh, All right. <laughs> so we we've already we're already kind of upgrading talent wise, acting talent wise when it comes to this. So if he could put up a good performance, if the story is interesting enough, I'll be willing to forgive the aesthetic. But if that's the aesthetic you're gonna go with, you better nail everything else. Mm -hmm. sure. And worst case scenario, we're gonna have a bunch of uh, Halloween costumes running around looking like the crowd. Hey everyone, let's take a moment to talk about where I've been getting these new Not A Strong Start t-shirts from. Head on over to itsnaz.threadless.com, the only place where you can get Not A Strong Start merch. Whether it's our newly designed mascot, or just your favorite movie logo now with some Nas flair. You can rep your Nas love on tee, hoodie, mug, rug, and so much more. So get yours today. Just click on that link below and have yourself a strong start. A Not A Strong? Have a Not A Strong Start? Have a... A start that's strong, but not so strong. You know what to do. Now that we touched on Bill Skarsgård, who we know has mm -hmm. family in the business, his dad, his brother, all have successful careers. I feel this is the perfect time to go into talking about legacy actors and what they refer to out there as Nepo baby actors. Mm -hmm. uh, George, you want to uh, let us know a little bit about what we're going to be talking about in the episode? Sure. So... Here's the thing. Nepo babies is something that we're hearing in today's terminology when it comes to someone who has a legacy that they're coming from, like a, a parent who is an actor or a producer, director, singer, 
whatever it is. That's what we call them today. But back in our day, growing up in the 80s and 90s, we didn't call them Nepo babies. They were just legacy actors. And back in that day, like, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but it kind of felt they came from a different caliber. Like when you were someone who had a parent who came from the business, you in turn were kind of keeping that legacy going. And you didn't mm -hmm. tarnish the name. You either expanded upon it or made it better. This day and age, it doesn't feel like it's kind of going that way. It feels like a lot of these young actors are getting a shot just because of who their parent is, and they don't really have the talent to back it up. So I feel like we have a difference from like legacy to Nepo. And that's why I feel like it's, it's important to, dis to distinguish the two, the two different factions. What do you guys think on that? Me personally, I'm not a fan of the term Nepo babies. It's definitely used in a negative connotation. Uh, referring to individuals who took advantage of the opportunities provided to them by their parents or family members who made it in the industry. So a lot of those doors, they didn't have to struggle to go up the stairs to get to those doors. They're wide open for them. Me personally, I don't see that as a bad thing. You know, I feel any any parent or any person in that position most likely is going to provide that opportunity for for their kids at all and are the kids supposed to say no don't give me this opportunity at all <laughs> like i i, I want to struggle well some will so i might do that but realistically you're going to choose the path of least resistance most of the time we have enough things in just regular life that we have to struggle with that if something can be, become a little easier you're going to take that path so I've never been a fan of the whole Nepo thing because it almost seems insulting. That being said, we're just going to talk about it, how it's described out there in the world right now. I get the, in the past, it really came to the attention when you had descendants of like big name actors. And I think social media is a big aspect of that because now you're getting exposure to some of these, uh, these kids, these uh, sons, daughters, or whatever they choose to label themselves of these uh, celebrities. We're getting access to them a lot younger, a lot sooner, whether it's through their own social medias or people prying into into their, into their life, the accessibility to all of them. So we're seeing them while they're younger, sometimes before they even develop their skills uh, overall. So they might get exposure from being influencers, which can lead them also to get some of these acting jobs and stuff before they're prepared. Well, I feel in the past didn't have that microscope or that exposure to the extent that we have now. So even though these doors were open, a lot of it was done behind the scenes. They probably had to work a little bit. So that might be a difference between both. Yeah, it's like when you hear like the whole Nepo thing, it sounds derogatory. I feel like it's sort of a, a lazy way to kind of just group them in together. Because if you're growing up in an artistic uh, family, you tend to be artistic yourself, right? You're taking traits from your parents. Like that's what you're around. That's what you're influenced by. Naturally, there's like a natural progression that you may start getting into that. And then sometimes you have a parent that is just phenomenal at what they do. It's sort of like to compare it to sports, like that Michael Jordan thing, right? If you have like the Michael Jordan or like the LeBron James, for instance, as a parent, and then you as a kid is trying, you're automatically labeled as like, well, you're just not as good. It's like, well, no, your dad was just a beast or your mom was just amazing. Like, that's not fair to the kid because... In Hollywood, sure, there's a lot of connections that you have, but a lot of it is more uh, behind the scenes. So you hear more like producing that are kind of giving those opportunities. Sure, you hear that with acting, but you still have to be decent. You still have to be good. Otherwise, they're not going to keep giving you parts like that, especially like leading roles. Of course, that still happens occasionally, but you still have to put in the grind work, though. You still have to be at least somewhat decent, or you should. So I think it's just kind of a lazy approach to say if you're not as good as your parent, then you're just... A Nepo. I think it's a flexible term, personally. Uh, just because you grow up in an artistic family doesn't mean that you will be artistic, in my opinion. And that's because coming from someone who does not have an artistic family, you know, so it's just like talent is talent. It it, it happens despite circumstances. And, yeah, 100%. And yeah. there are some people, which we'll get into our next episode when we talk about our Nepo babies, who clearly have zero talent and it's just opportunity is put in front of them and they keep on getting it. You know, so it's like I, I can't say that just because they're in a movie or whatever, because they're their parent who's they are, that they actually have talent. Sometimes okay, just see, because of who your parent this, is, you get this you is an interesting part. <laughs> this is the interesting part because George brought this to us, to me and Jose. I'm like, well, I can't say these people don't have talent. <laughs> like I can't go to that extreme and be that negative about some of these people here. 
but like it's trying to define what we mean by these terms and even that itself it's like the it's it's a spectrum everything's a spectrum in life right very few things are actually absolute so to say it'll be interesting so i recommend people yeah. to sit there and check in on that episode <laughs> you might see some arguments <laughs> some heated debates there's definitely going to be some back and forth with it yeah, but oh, yeah. like i said the, the term itself it used in isolation and when someone just like oh that's a nepo baby it's not used in a positive light you know for sure it's you, definitely not yeah, yeah. Yeah, usually it's more uh it's used by people in the term of like, oh, you're only who you are because of your dad. It has nothing to do with you. You know, talentless is usually what's hidden behind that comment, what someone is trying to say. Which is why like I feel the way I feel about the term. It's discrediting. And maybe some don't have the talent to get the opportunities that they have. There are other ones where they already labeled that before they even have a chance to develop their skills or a chance to really prove themselves. They get that label right off the bat. Yeah, which is true. Like a good example, because these people aren't on our, any of our lists, but you look at the Russell Hudson family, you know, with the Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn and everything. Mm -hmm. All of those kids have proven themselves in one way or another. And I've heard like the Nepo thing used against like Wyatt a little bit, but he's honestly just as good as Kate Oliver, if not better at times, to be honest. Wyatt's I think he's talent. he's really proven himself. You yeah. know, he's he's kind of replicated his father's life too, in the sense of being a, an athlete and then hopping into acting. So it's, it's just like, that's again, circumstances for him just happen to mirror his dad. And he also just happens to be really good at what he does. Yeah. But I wouldn't consider yeah. him a Nepo baby. And he's had a progression to it. Like I feel now he's really come into his own. His, his opportunity, his exposure is really increasing now. So it hasn't been a, like overnight. He's in like seven different things. Boom, here you go in your face. Look at my look at my kids. Yeah. Type action. You know, he's he's like progressed through it. So it's, it has seemed like a natural progression. Do we want to get into our list? We've made our top 10 list here. This is compiled with all of us here together. We each put our top 10 together and I averaged it all out. So this Blood, is the sweat, official, and tears were made into this. official Nas opinion. So mm -hmm. even we can't argue with these final results as much as I freaking want to, because oh, one of us try. ruined it. One of us ruined this goddamn list. You, <laughs> it. you are. Who, me? <laughs> no, he couldn't be me. with us in this episode today, actually. But his doppelganger is here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll start from number 10 and go all the way to, to number one. Who is the best out of all the legacy actors? Okay. So we're going with legacy actors. So these are like our old school actors. These are the ones mm -hmm. who paved the way for everyone who exists today. And with number 10, we're going with Tracy Ellis Ross, who is the daughter of Diana Ross and Robert Ellis Silverstein. That's right. This is exactly where I had her I, on my list. Talked about like how we viewed these lists when we were creating our own personal ones. And I know there is some differences on how we created our list. Like yeah. for me personally... I looked at impact of like of career more than actual like talent and ability. What impact did they leave or are leaving in the career? And the reason I had Casey at 10 is because compared to some of the other ones, you know, what she's done is less quantity wise. You know, she, her big thing is a uh, blackish, her filmography, you know, the notches on her belt were, were less than some of the other people on this list, which is why I put her at, at 10. It had nothing to do with talent itself. I had her in the same spot. And the way that I view this, because even a lot of these lists is like, well, how do, how do we rank it? Right. How do we view it? It's not necessarily so much in talent. Because I think she's, you know, she's hilarious. She has a ton of talent. I just kind of saw it as like a baton, right? Like if it's like a relay race and you see what the mom, the laps that she ran, and then she's passing the baton to her to see how she can carry on that legacy that we talked about. That's the way that I saw it. She's done a lot, but her mom has just done, her mom was like the Michael Jordan. So like, <laughs> it's really hard to catch that. So in terms of that, it's not so much the effort on the child, it's more of just a testament to your parents and you just being next in line. That's the way that I saw it. So, you know, shout out to her. She's great. Um, I just felt like, okay, compared to some of the other ones, your mom is just amazing. And it's just, it's a hard, hard thing to carry on. Yeah. It's like being the the child of Michael Jackson. It's like, good luck. Good luck blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, see, with me, I think this is the one where we probably all agreed because I had her at number 10 also. But how I judged my list was a mix of talent and career of like what their career has has done and how it will stand the test of time. So I, I combined those two things together. And I, I think what impressed me with her to even put her on a top 10 list is that she kind of came out of nowhere. I first saw her on the show Girlfriends on a UPN. And, and from there, she was already showing like a comedic prowess. And that show lasted for quite a few seasons. And then later on, she came up with like Blackish and other things like that. And I, I think she's really proved herself, especially her mom's a singer. She's done some acting, but that's what her mom does. She is, She's over here just trying to do her own thing probably using a little bit of the clout, you know, from the mom's success. But I, I really appreciate that she's trying to, like, do something artistic, but in a totally different field that doesn't relate to what her mom is really known for. So she could really then shine on her own and not be compared too much to her mom. At number nine, we have Laura Dern, whose parents are Bruce Dern and Diane Ladd. Number so, nine, how do we feel? So far, we're on point. This was my number nine, too. Again, I wasn't going by by telling the cell. Probably the biggest thing that I know her for is Jurassic Park. Not that that's the best thing that she's done. But that's the biggest thing that I remember her from. And I remember just looking through her her filmography. She has some good ones out there. Like I think she was in the the founder, which is a really good one. But the impact of overall her projects doesn't match up with some of the people that I had higher on this list, which is why I had to uh, bring her down a little bit. So as much as her parents had a great career and, you know, Bruce Dern, I mean, he's been around forever. I feel like uh, Laura's is really good. And I've seen some phenomenal work out of her. She was in Jurassic Park and I can't just dismiss that because that is a mega massive movie that is monumental more than what her parents has probably done in terms of the epic and the pop culture appeal that it had. So that's why I had her higher up on my list. I see uh, all the other guys dragged her down. So it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought she was great, man. She was so good. She was one of the, <laughs> she was one of the best parts of the new uh, Star Wars trilogy. You know what I mean? Like she did really good, man. I hate to say I actually had her in the same spot as Jose did. So she was at my number nine already too. Uh, but that's not to say that she she isn't impressive. Like I remember first seeing her as a kid in the movie Mask with Eric Stoltz and Cher. Mm -hmm. Yep. And already like, and she was so young too. She was like a teenager, and immediately showing the prowess that she was going to have mm -hmm. within her later career. Uh, I loved her in the movie Marriage Story as the lawyer. So freaking mm -hmm. good in that movie. Phenomenal. Like you, oh. you hated her in that because she was oh, so yeah. good. Yeah, but I hated how much she was right at times. That's the thing, and, and she, her conviction in it. It's like, oh, hundred percent. So she was, she was great. Doing awards that's, right now. I want to. Give... She <laughs> was perfect as a lawyer, and it felt like that. That's what. That's why to me, I'm like, man, because if we're talking in terms of talent, you talk about in terms of pop culture and everything else, like the appeal of her movies. To me, she elevated over her parents. Yeah, but she carried it. We'll hop us to number eight. Number eight, I feel like can be pretty divisive. I don't know if the fans are going to agree with this. They might think she doesn't belong on this list. But uh, number eight was Gwyneth Paltrow. Daughter three of... Three for three! <laughs> Don't be too excited, all right? Rosé? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Gwyneth is the daughter of Blythe Danner and Bruce Paltrow. This is exactly where I, I had her for the list. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard me earlier, but three for three! She has some good stuff under, under her belt, uh, you know, and a mixture of different genres. So she's gone into comedies like Shallow Hal. She's done thrillers like she was in Seven. She's she was part of the you know the MCU, the Iron Man movies. So she has some really good movies under belts. On top of that, she's also been a successful entrepreneur outside of it. She's the ones that've been able to sell you know special vagina scented. candles vagina candles <laughs> yes rose that is her uh yeah so you know on top of the movie she's done she's found entrepreneurial successes after that she also has a cookbook that's very very popular uh that i've heard people talking about so she's been able to expand beyond just the acting wise and, and the dishes kind of also taste like her vagina <laughs> I Wait, believe it's called goop, dishes? right? It's goop, I believe. It's goop. goop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Finger licking oh, yeah. good. 
for that, I had to put her uh, above Laura, Laura Dern because on top of the movie itself, she's made her name for herself in multiple facets. That's fair. <laughs> I, uh, she is, I mean, she was in the Royal Tenenbaums. I loved her in the Royal Tenenbaums. She's been around, man. She's been around a lot. Uh, she's great in Shallow Hal. <laughs> so, like, she's been around in a lot of projects. There's a lot of things that I've seen her in. Um, you know, her parents were great as well. So I feel like she carried the legacy very well. She was in a lot more popular films than, than, than they have. And she's also probably had more critical acclaim, I think. Right. So all around, that's pretty much the definition of taking the baton and carrying it further. So, yeah, there you go. And she has some, uh, some pretty well scented candles, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's always a line. I'm always uh, gonna stop over it a little bit, right? We we have no Chuck here anymore, so I'm the one that has to periodically yeah. cross oh, the line. Sometimes. There, there we go. I I was yeah. here like tiptoeing around the line, you know, specially scented candles. No, nope. I just oh, penetrated. It comes in China. <laughs> Straight <laughs> penetrated. We're going full force, baby. Uh, We're going head deep. You want to say that we don't agree a lot of times? Like I am always against the, the curve here, but like me and Jose, our list is identical right now. Because I too had her at the same spot, and it's because talent wise, I think she is very talented. You know, uh, she's also a really good singer. I think she, that kind of gets overshadowed at times. I, I loved her in the movie Duets, and she did good in another one, Country Strong, I believe it was called. Her entrepreneurship, I can care less about, honestly. I, I feel like that's uh, neither here nor there. She's making money because it's her name, but I'm not sure if the products are actually that good. Uh, reviews can say otherwise. I think she's definitely left her mark. Uh, when I think of her namesake, I don't even think of her father. <laughs> I, 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 th I hear Poucher. I think I heard. We got at number seven, Mr. Kiefer Sutherland. Four for four, father. and I'm not talking about Wendy's. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> oh, in and out. <laughs> uh, his dad is obviously Donald Sutherland, mother Shirley Douglas. Well, I agree here. Even though, uh, you know, he's kind of towards the twilight of his career, he isn't really coming out with, with too much. Um, he's had two uh, successful shows with 24 being, you know, one of the most successful shows on on tv as hard as it is to catch up on if you weren't watching it when it was on it was successful it, it was a huge hit uh you know jack bauer became synonymous with you know characters like a uh, jason Bourne, uh you know james bond and stuff like that like i remember so many polls and memes and everything where it was it would mention jack bauer in the name of those as like oh i'm gonna jack bauer this or things like that so earlier in his career he had some straight bangers that i grew up with and i enjoyed you know he had a flatliner stand by me a lost boys movies that have legs and longevity over time so he built some classics then I had a big TV show. He's made a really good name for himself, and that's why I had to put him here because he's had hits over multiple decades. He came in like a sledgehammer immediately when he came in. He did what we talked about in terms of legacy, where you're, you're kind of given that open door, and he came in, but he was a very good actor, killing it right away. His dad, though, is no slump, right? Like Invasion oh. of the Body Snatchers, man. Like... His dad has been in a lot of amazing projects. He's a phenomenal actor. We've seen him do a lot of great performances. His son came in and did a very good job as well. And the question is, which one would you guys consider as the better actor? Forget about the project that they've done. Yeah. I personally would probably go his dad. I think Donald's a little bit of a better actor, but Kiefer's probably the one that's, well, Kiefer's had the better tentpole projects that have become like the bigger mainstream stuff per se. But I think Donald's probably a little bit of the better actor. But not by much. Yeah, I would say yeah, his dad is has a more refined ability to what he does. Mm -hmm. While Kiefer probably has a better aspect of like when it comes to like char like eccentric characters. There's a subtleness to how his father acts, yeah. while he has more of a nuanced ex extreme mm -hmm. thing too. Like you just think of things like Lost Boys or Eye for an Eye, stuff like that, you know, and even you mentioned Jack Bauer. None of those characters are the same. They're all very different. Mm -hmm. You know, and like while I can say with the, the father donald like some of his characters can feel similar still even though it's a really good job they're still mm -hmm. similar at number six we've got jamie lee curtis oh Daughter... the streak is over <laughs> it had to come eventually <laughs> uh, her parents are tony curtis and janet lee obviously most famous famously known for psycho all right your streak has been broken so let's hop it over to dan dan how do you feel about this jamie lee at number six 
She's great, man. She she carried, she definitely carried the torch. I love the fact that she recreated the psycho photos. Like, did you guys see that? I was like, I think it was Entertainment Weekly or something yeah. like that, where you yeah. see it, the mom with the crate, you know, in the shower scene. She did enough building up her own legacy, of course, with Michael Myers, you know, with Halloween series. Um, still bouncing great, winning her first Oscar for everything, everywhere, all at once, but she was phenomenal in. She's always been a nice delight. Loved her in True Lies. She is great in True Lies and carried her own. So, Jamie Lee Curtis has always been awesome. I, I I love seeing her. Every time I see her, I kind of get like a nice smile. You know what I mean? Because there was like a, like a period where it seemed like she kind of disappeared for a while. And then you didn't really see much about her. And it seemed like she was kind of doing like talk shows and stuff. It's nice that she's getting like a resurgence. I agree. I, I had her uh, a little bit higher than this. But her career, going from like Halloween, you know, she built off that. And she's known as one of the screen She's got that on their belt. But then on top of that, you know, she was able to expand, do movies from different genres. You know, overall, we, you know, we talked, you talked about everything uh, everywhere all at once now and the type of character she played there for where she started in Halloween and then her character in, in Crew Lies. And where that was. And then she also had, I think it was called Screen Queens, a TV show. Yeah, uh, and her yep. character there, and and that's the thing. She always finds a way to make her characters very interesting and and entertaining. Doesn't matter what her characters are, you're never bored by her performance. You know, she has pretty good comedic timing. We know she could do scared. She could. She's done. She's done serious. She's done action. So the versatility that she brings to it. And Halloween was what, 1978, right? 78, 79, something like that. Here we are over 40 years later, and she's winning an award for her performance. That is longevity. That Finally she's winning had. an award. Finally yeah. winning yeah. an award. Yeah. That's after like four years. So that is longevity, a career where, you know, she's released products and movies. Uh, that have been good over time. There might have been some spaces in between here and there, like you said, where it seemed like she disappeared, but then she'll come back and she'll release something like, ah, there's Jamie Lee Curtis again. She was one I struggled with. I was like, I had her like top three, top five. Top, like I was going back and forth with her just because, and it's because you said, to reiterate again, that disappearance. The disappearance messed with me for a bit, but I really looked at her career. It's like, she's taken the character of Laurie Strode. Just look at that one character alone. And how many Halloween she's been in. While the character still feels familiar in each one, she manages to attack it in a different way with every movie. So it feels nice and fresh and it adds more depth to the character. Like she's adding to the lore of Laurie as much as there's a lore for Michael. She has her own lore. And seeing her like in the new trilogy, which wasn't great. And we've talked about it in the past, how bad that movie was. But we never say that she's bad. If there's one thing we never complain about in any of those movies, we never say, oh, well, Jamie Lee Curtis phoned it in. No, she's still acting her ass off in those movies. And I'm always impressed when someone gets older and they can still show us they have more to give. You know, like I'll kind of crap on like the Pacinos and the De Niro's you know, nowadays because sometimes I feel like they're, just, they're the same person in every movie. They're still great, but they're not trying new things. I feel like she's still experimenting. And that's always really refreshing to see. All right. Number five, we got mm -hmm. Michael Douglas. Parents are Kirk Douglas and Diana Douglas. Let's see what my list went wrong. I actually have Michael. <laughs> I have Michael Douglas one higher than Jamie Lee Curtis. So they were actually were back to back on mine. Anyway, I mean, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas has had a great career. Never mind the fact that, you know, he married a smoke shop. Uh, so... <laughs> I remember being young, you know, when I was a kid, and we all had a crush on her, and it was like Michael Douglas was the one to scoop her up. Zorro, but, Zorro, yeah, yeah, Zorro, yes. It was that movie, but, Zorro. Again, another person that has so many good movies under under their belt. Basic Instinct, you know, we we have that out there. We had uh, uh, fall, falling down. Uh, Fatal Attraction. Those are just like early 90s, late 80s when he was like, you know, dropping these. But then you go to like the late, late 90s and we talked about this movie in another one of our episodes that at least through the first viewing, it's a really good classic and that's the game. Mm -hmm. You know, one of those movies you yeah. watch the first time and you're like, holy crap, this is a good movie. You know, once it's spoiled, multiple views, it might not be the same, but it doesn't take away from that first time that you watched it. 
And then he sort of has kind of reinvented himself, you know, over time and adapted, kind of like Jamie Lee Curtis, where, you know, he started to expand into other different genre. You know, we've seen him in the MCU and in, in the Ant-Man uh, movies, which, you know, earlier in his career, I probably wouldn't have pictured, you know, Michael Douglas in like, you know, comic book movies. And here he is and not phoning it in. You know, even though it's not like those genres that he used to focus on a lot, you know, the talent is is still there. He still demands your attention when he is on screen. He did great in Romance of the Stone. So yes. even going back to that, yeah. like he was phenomenal in that. And he's so good with comedy. He has like that subtle comedy that he does, you know, where um, it's sort of like the little sly way of talking to the side of his mouth you know, that he does. And he does it great in Ant-Man when you see him, you know, doing that. Like You see it so much where even the lines themselves, like what he's saying is kind of like dad jokes, sort of. But the way he delivers it, he just chuckle and it's like, huh? <laughs> there's Douglas. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's great, man. And his dad was great. His dad was yeah. great. So like, shout out to his dad too. But Michael Douglas is is the man. Like, he's awesome. Yeah. You know, I remember being young and with the Catherine Zeta Jones and when he scripture, I was like, that bastard. But like, you can't <laughs> even be mad. You can't even be mad at him, man. Uh, he's also one of those people where like, it's kind of ridiculous how much of a carbon copy he is of his dad. Mm -hmm. Like, they're Eyeballs. practically Eyeballs. identical. Honestly, it's yeah. it's kind of scary when you yeah, look at like how like his dad looked like in Spartacus and stuff and how he looks. It's like, wow, you're the mm -hmm. same person. So like, mm -hmm. growing up. I watched Kirk Douglas movies with my parents mm -hmm. and then Michael Douglas happened and I thought they were the same person as a child. Like five-year-old George. son looks like him. I was His like, son oh, this looks the like guy. him. <laughs> Have you seen a picture where it's all three of them next to each other? It's I'm crazy. Like, That's the same. It's yeah. like they just use the aging it's technology. Just the mold. They just use a mold. That's it. And they're, they're pressing <laughs> them out. And they're... That's it. Yeah. It's, like it's for CGI. Me, I was never surprised that he entered the MCU because I felt like in his early career, he harnessed comedy with serious perfectly like one of my favorite movies with him is war of the roses mm -hmm. i love him in dark comedies it's directed so by Danny devito good. yep <laughs> <laughs> like it's honestly like, to me one of his best things that he's ever done but he has so many that we've already mentioned like mm -hmm. he i think having him in the middle of the pack it's there's a reason for that he's kind of like almost the standard of mm -hmm. where you got to be all right at number four we've got angelina jolie daughter of john voight and <laughs> marshaline bertrand speaking of smoke shows <laughs> right okay so the All thing right. with angina jolie they had this uh like i remember um you, you know when you cut people's faces in half and it's always like a little bit of like it's always a little something off a little asymmetry to something angina jolie is the one where they say it has almost exact perfect mirrored half on half which is why people see her as so attractive and the lore that she has. But the thing about Angelina Jolie is that people attribute, of course, of her physical appearance and how attractive and gorgeous she was. And she was known as regarded as like the most beautiful thing in Hollywood for like a long period of time. But man, is her acting good. Her acting is great. Like yeah, girl interrupted. One, yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, it was like her version of like Brad Pitt, right? With like uh, 12 monkeys kind of thing. She was so good in that role phenomenal she can act she was great in uh gia like she was great in that movie as well mm -hmm. if you've seen that one i recommend it <laughs> you know but she has given us a lot of great performances and she definitely carried and picked up the mantle you know her dad was good you know john boy awesome yeah. She was great. First time I ever saw her was in Hackers. Yeah, I was like, yeah, mm, yep. yeah. Who is that? <laughs> you know, who is that? I'm gonna keep tabs on that one. But man, <laughs> but she Mark. like again. Yes, I don't want to make it about her about just her physical appearance though, because her acting was really damn good. It it's overlooked in my opinion. Took up the next mantle and passed up her dad easily. No, I agree here, and I actually had her one slot above Michael Douglas. So if it's there, but yeah, you spoke about Girl Interrupted, such an amazing performance in that. I remember watching that that movie when I was younger, and then I got to watch it. It was just because like she steals every scene. It's just such powerfulness behind her performance, you know. And then you know she did other serious things. You know she did like Original Sin with Banderas. She did a great yeah. job on that. But then. On top of like having these like strong award worthy performances, she was also then able to go in and get some of those like 90s cheese action movie classics and perform in those. 
you know, so we had some of the ones that we've enjoyed, like Fun in 60 Seconds. She also had a few uh, crime th thrillers that I remember enjoying. She was in Bone Collector when Denzel she was Washington. She was another one, like, Taking Lives. Overall, she's been, she's done period pieces on top of mm -hmm. that, too. The only reason I didn't have her higher on my list is because, you know, her career has kind of subsided. You know, it's it's quieted down for a while now. And, you know, she's probably, you know, focusing more on That's family. all choice, though. Yeah, she yeah. chose yeah, yeah. to step away. And I it's think she's been producing. Thing. I think she's, yeah. like, producing yeah. and doing things more like that. I mean, she yeah, got, like, 20,000 kids to take care of, too. Yeah. It's not it's not a, a talent thing or anything like that. But, yeah. you know, when you're doing a list like this and you're getting into your top five, it's the little things is what's going to kind of drop down. And that's what dropped her down. That was the nitpick to bring her down is that her career has quieted down while you had, you know, some other ones that, you know, may still be going, you know, strong. Yeah, I think that's the cool thing with her, too, is, you know, we mentioned how great of an actor she is. If she also had a moment of taking like that Tom Cruise route of things where she was just crushing it in action movies, you know, and like, she's, you know, doing a large chunk of her stunts, not all her stunts, but a large chunk of them. And I always feel that's a big deal, you know, especially for the females. A lot of females don't get to do their own stunts or will choose not to. And she's just like, no, I want you to see this doing this. Yeah. Mr. And Mrs. <laughs> yeah. Smith, they did that, you know? right? Oh my God. Tomb Mr. And Mrs. Raider. Smith wanted, yeah. Tomb Raider wanted. I rewatched Mr. And Mrs. Smith recently because I watched that horrible show and that it still holds up that movie is still amazing and she's she's wonderful in it her like, it's unfair putting her in movies with other people even if she plays a, plays a smaller part because like jose said she'll steal the scenes and so the only choice is to put someone equally as beautiful as her like brad pitt so that way you don't feel like it's too much of a competition all right we're at our top three now this is it number three nicholas cage Ooh. obviously uncle francis Ford coppola if you guys don't know that by now read a book or drink the wine. Or drink the wine. <laughs> Don't drink the wine. I've had it. You can. It's okay. You can pass. <laughs> I had Nick higher. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too yeah. high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't. I don't. I don't think it was too high. If you look at the longevity of his career and what he was unable to do in his career, uh, especially we we've had the. Uh, page uh, renaissance over the last few years where he's put out a lot of quality stuff at a point where most people thought his career was like done and he's been able to come back and keep putting out this banger and then on top of that just you know career like impact even during his slow period people knew who nick cage was he built a a, a brand of his own. It wasn't necessarily a good brand. It, 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 we love the brand. Uh, we love yeah. the brand. But from but, Hollywood standard, Angelina Jolie was the more is the way more of the A list. <laughs> like that's your person. It wasn't even that. Uh, like he built his own like cult following going through. Yeah. To, to the point, and like I can't, I can't sure. ignore that. Whether regardless what he was putting on screen, like I said, I went more on like impact on my list over talent itself. Is Angelina more talented than him? Yes, but I feel Nick Cage overall through his career has uh, had a higher uh, <laughs> yeah. overall impact. Yeah. Totally disagree with you. Impact. <laughs> it, Angelina Jolie yeah. was considered the most beautiful woman in the world for like a freaking decade. You had women and men <laughs> obsessed with her. This woman, uh, Nick Cage. I love the uh, impact and stuff that he had. <laughs> I'm a fan of Nick Cage. We all know this, but like he had a lot of bad duds in there. She was like an A-lister forever. He was an A-lister for a little chunk uh, of time. Yeah, he he did have some bad days, but didn't his career start before her? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He yeah. started before her, and is still going after she's kind of faded off. So is that all we're going so, by is lo longevity, like how long they last? Is that what we're doing? All that makes together. But longevity is part of impact. If you're la if you're going uh, longer, more more decades on stuff. So your impact, you have a larger uh, footprint when it when it comes to it. You're, you know, you're touching more generations where you're starting and where you're ending. He's still going. You know, how many movies has he released in the last few years? Okay, what? but 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 you can always argue because you could say who had more leading roles in movies and especially who had more leading role in movies that got released in theaters 
who had more duds, uh, who got <laughs> who had a bigger box office success in terms of when you add it all together. See, and this is why we love these lists because we love having these arguments and these conversations, right? This I is mean, why I was he, like, this is juicy conversation. He made so many movies, you can probably join all his movies together, and his box office numbers will be higher than Angelina Jolie. That's a good might, question. We I might know. have to do some calculating. We might have we to might do some. Have yeah, to do I'm some. wondering. I'm wondering. I'm serious. I, yeah. Could be. Could be, Maybe. but could also not be. Because it sounds like Jose yeah. is counting all of his straight to DVD movies also. It's... Yeah, but but those didn't hit box office, right? So if we're talking about it's box office, you got to count the ones that actually. Yeah, because sure, Nick Cage is acting in like ten movies every year, and like he never takes a break. She has one movie, and then like yeah, that beats also, like eight years. Like she worth only of work. has to do yeah. this many movies. He yeah. needs to do. He every needs time. to. He has to still pay the tax. He's got to pay the damn government before he gets shipped to prison. Uh, and he bought well, a T-Rex skull. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you cumulatively there's more money on his end. But then I think, like, if you go, I think to and you survey general audiences, I think you're gonna have more success having people naming more Nicolas Cage movies that they know than Angelina Jolie movies. Mm -hmm. But again, it's the recognition. Nick Cage himself basically made himself into a meme. Mm -hmm. So that you have that recognition, not just for movie fans, but also to general audiences are gonna be able to recognize, you know, the Nick Cage mannerism, the Nick Cage style of acting, you know, some of the most ridiculous things that he's done. The impact that he left recognition wise i think is higher than Angelina jolie even though she is more talented and yeah, her it, top projects be his top projects yeah. um it could and like i i'm in line with you in terms of like uh movie goers and all that stuff i'm talking more for the general people that don't only really watch a lot of movies like like females a lot of younger demographic of females they don't know who the hell nick cage is like they don't watch gone in 60 seconds but they might watch stuff that angela uh, jolie has been in but I'm not disagreeing with you in terms of like recognition and all that stuff. Like I'm more fascinated by this conversation because I'm really curious. I'm not a hundred percent sold that if you add all the box office theater success that Nick Cage has made more money than Angelina Jolie, but I'm not a hundred percent certain that I can tell you that she won either. I really have no idea. And it's very fascinating <laughs> because you have like the way that you separate and it's like, she chose to step away, but she is like, was an Oscar contender and Oscar, you know, we know that route, but he also won one as well. Right. But yeah. then he was also shamed of Hollywood for a long time, whereas she would like ran Hollywood for a long time. But then she stepped away and it's just it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's really fascinating <laughs> how you rate this and how where you can go, because you can really make the argument of both cases. And you're not wrong in what you're saying, Jose, just like I'm not wrong in what I'm saying. You can really it just depends how you rate this thing. And that's what's fun about. This. Yeah. Well, here's a, here's here's a deciding vote right here. All right. Yeah. I actually had him at my number three. And I think I did Angelina too. Jolie was at number four for me. I had... Oh, and you know okay. why? It's because Nicolas Cage is the only person who can play Nicolas Cage. That's why. <laughs> yeah, but you can't have a I was deciding <laughs> who was going to be at number three. I, I, was, yeah. I was going back and forth. I was yeah. like, they'll probably find someone else to play Angelina Jolie. There's plenty of pretty people in the world. They could probably yeah, but, but that's dub, not just what she dub. is, though. I know she's a great actress. She is a great yes, actress. Yeah. But I'm looking at the autobiography of her, and mm -hmm. only Nick Cage could be Nick Cage. Okay. We're not going to so hire he, somebody. No, true. But also, when it went to the ranking, I was going by the baton passing of what we're talking about, oh, and for sure. you have yeah, to yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to look at family lineage. Yeah, yeah. There is a ton of Coppolas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, and Nick, there's a ton and of Nick them. Outshines all of them. And no. <laughs> well, yes, but but Francis Ford Coppola has some amazing stuff. But but yeah, it's still arguable. But there's a lot of them. In terms of Angelina Jolie, you just have her and you just have her pops, essentially. Okay. That that being said though, a mm -hmm. lot there's a lot more people I feel know her dad. So Nick Cage, there's a lot of people that don't know he's connected to the Coppola. Yeah, the name change helped, mm -hmm. but he's been able to stand on his own. Yeah, um, and I do more. respect the fact that he changed his name to Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. you know, yeah. name wise, usually they think Nick Cage, you're less likely to associate him with his family <laughs> than you are with Angelina Jolie. I also love the fact that when we're talking about Angelina Jolie, George was like, nobody can do this, okay? She steals a movie. She'll take the scene from anybody. As soon as we have Nick Cage, anybody can do Angelina Jolie, okay? You just find another pretty face.
<laughs> Go back to the tape three minutes ago. You just said something entirely different. Okay. Flop, 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 flop. I flip, I flop. I flip, I flop. I'll, I'll pose this question. This and... is a fun question. This is our yeah. funnest question we've had on this show in a little while now. This is awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll pose I'll pose this question. If you were to poll a whole bunch of people, both fanatics and well, I wouldn't say general audience because general audience are less likely movie. to do like to do marathons. Mm. But you know, let's say from high like movie fanatics to like lower movie fanatics, are they more likely to do a Nicolas Cage marathon of his movies or an Angelina Jolie marathon? I would think Nick Cage, but that's because they're a lot more fun and all that stuff. And like I said, dude, I'm a Nick Cage (laughs) fan. (laughs) I'm a Nick Cage fan, but we're not talking about like who's funner to watch. Like, you think anyone's going to sit there and say like all the Nick Cage movies that we watch? Like, you think you're going to say, oh, Con Air's a great movie? Yes, we say Con Air's a great movie. (laughs) Is it actually a great movie? No. Yes. Oh, oh, what? No! <laughs> it ha- it ha- we love it, though! Got <laughs> 60 seconds? It's not good, but I love it! <laughs> a lot of his movies have built, have built a cult following again. That impact and recognition. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with that, right? We're just talking about, like, legacy and, like, the star lore of, like, you know, A-list and, like, uh, the dominance that, like, okay, if you see Hollywood as, like, politics, right? You know, like, you know, Democrats and Republicans and whatnot. Engine and Joe Lee had like a presidency on Hollywood for like a long period of time that Nick Cage never held that crown. Like he never was on that PowerPoint controlling Hollywood. She was married to Brad Pitt and they were the definition of Hollywood a couple for a long period of time. And like Billy they Bob ran Thornton. it. Don't forget that. The, the exactly. Billy Bob Thornton the whole blood. The blood Ex- vessels. 100%. Yeah, and- yeah. Bowling exactly inside of a limousine yes and that's my that. point jose <laughs> it it just depends how you rate it because if you say well in terms of legacy and power it's like well technically she had more power in hollywood but if we're talking in terms of movies and like longevity and all this it just depends how you rank it that's it all right we got hop on number two and one here because because if mm-hmm. that was divisive i feel like the next two are going to be also okay so number two robert downey jr Father Robert Downey Jr. Sr. How this guy was at number two. Someone else had him on their list way further down in an unbelievable place. That was Ooh. me. It was it was Jose. Had him at number six, I believe. What? What yes. the hell? How? So, uh, what? See? This is... talk, talk on this. Talk uh, on this. Yes, please. Mr. Jose. Right. <laughs> right. if, if, if we were going straight off of talent, he would probably mm-hmm. be in my top two. Maybe number one. Number okay. One, yeah. Talent. Yeah. That was right. a big component of my scoring. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it was established beforehand. But when it comes to career impact, due to one the the, disappear- the forced disappearance that he had to have in between, and then once he did come back, kind of went into Iron Man, and then he pretty much was just playing one role for a good portion of the rest of his career was pretty much Iron Man. Yeah, you had Sherlock Holmes like on the side, but that wasn't, the, it was, it was Iron Man. So the lack of variety in his career after he had his comeback is what I held against him compared to the other people that I put behind them, which had more versatility. Not that he can't be versatile, but he had, he has not been doing the, the projects, whether it's his choice or not. That's why I dropped him a little bit more. I don't blame him. The Iron Man character carried him for years, and he did an amazing job in a performance that he doesn't get enough credit for. But it is what it is on paper. It's kind of been that, and then just a few side things sprinkled. That's why I had to bring him down. But talent-wise, he's he's probably at the top one or two for me. Can we rephrase something that Jose just said right now? He said that the the role of Iron Man carried him. Correct. That's what I heard. Since he and came we back. rephrased that to he carried the MCU on his back. <laughs> and we put it to that. That's why yeah. I put him so much higher. Because it's like I had this him one. guy started something and he freaking lugged it. Not that there wasn't some teammates pulling along with him, mm-hmm. but let's be real. All right. When you're watching Avengers, any of the Avengers, he's their leader. It's not freaking Captain America, even though he's written as the leader. No, Iron Man's the leader. And who's leading that team? Robert Downey Jr. 
Robert Downey Jr., when he dies with the freaking snap, I didn't cry, but the world cried. And I watched that movie so many times in the theater, and everyone was freaking all wet in the face because they lost their savior, which is Robert Ex- Downey Jr. Except <laughs> my wife, who woke up in the middle of it and said, What the fuck? What? He died? <laughs> Except her, Shut up, everybody Dan. else. We're cries. making a point here. <laughs> it is. It was. It was a great role, but it was one role. That's what I'm saying. That when he, you get here that to he the evolved top, evolved over time. Like he wasn't it just is. the same Iron Man. Like Iron Man okay. one Tony Stark and then Avengers Tony Stark are two different yes. Tony Starks. So <laughs> you saw an evolution of a character, right? But you also saw the dominance of him in the '80s. He was yes. great. Great in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. My God, he was good in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And then, of course, he's going to win an Oscar. We know he's going to win an Oscar now as he should have, right? He and to. he had the best comeback that we've seen. When we talk about no one could play like Nick Cage, no one could play like Robert Downey Jr., it's not just one character, right? We saw the evolution of it. It's also not a coincidence that as soon as he died in, in the Avengers, all of a sudden the MCU died with him <laughs> died with him he carried it and he made it a, a multi-billion dollar industry that we saw here it basically got disney to buy marvel like it saved marvel studios in the movie because it wasn't intended to be this and he created a 20 year thing like the, this this evolution of all these projects and television shows and everything like this man made it without iron man you don't have anything without jack you don't have shit. As amazing as it is, when you get here t- into the top ones, you know, it's it's nitpicking pretty much at mm. this point because it's all yeah. talented people. Yeah. The people I had above him presented more. You know, you had more more variety. Who did you have more, above him? He had Jamie Lee Curtis above him. <laughs> he, he had what? He had Andrew Fuck and Michael off, Douglas Jose. above him. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis? Fuck off. <laughs> That's an insult. No offense to Miss Curtis, but like, damn. What other actor she has gone away from charges and hiatus, other charges dude. and come back bigger and better than ever? He was in heart no and soul. <laughs> It's been he had one role for like 20 years. And he dominated <laughs> that he, that he, that he it. Evolved. Is. She's that, been the same role since evolved. the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> She's been playing the same character. She's done all different types of You just of, raved of, her. Of genre. <laughs> if you look at Robert Downey Jr. did too. Again, not off of talent, just off of his projects. Besides <laughs> the Iron Man character, what else has he put out that's been successful since he came back? Um, he did Oppenheimer did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was great. Oppenheimer like, just beforehand. happened. Yeah, and, no. and he also had Tropic beforehand. Thunder. No, he had Tropic Thunder. Like you said, he had the Sherlock Holmes movies. He had the Soloist with Jamie Foxx. The only movie that he did that didn't do that well was the was it called The Judge or whatever? The one he did with Robert Duvall. Mm-hmm. Like that one didn't yeah. do as well. But he's been yeah. producing no, do, stuff. Do, do little did not do. Do little well, didn't do so well. Yeah, that was yeah, post yeah. Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, that was the first yeah. one he did after Iron Man, and he admitted he did that for his kids. That wasn't even for him. Yeah, is it, did he? Did he have a a comedy with um Villa Fanakis? Uh, oh date? yeah, it was due yeah. date. Yeah, due date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with the dog. So, so that, that's what, that's what um, I'm yeah, saying. Like he that's did what stuff, I... but Marvel's contract also limits them from getting to do anything. You know, I mean, there, there's yeah. there's a reason why it happened, but like I like I said. When looking at it, I'm looking but at what Jamie it looks Lee like Lee on paper. Curtis? Yeah, that's just... <laughs> his pro. Even though it's just Iron Man, just Iron Man is a multi-billion-dollar industry. Yeah. She never touched anything close to that. I think I think this way. Look this way. Iron Man three is a bad movie in comparison to Iron Man, like some of the other Iron Mans. Like yeah, it's, but it's, like it's, Avengers, it's Civil War, like all the. But yeah. how good is he in Iron Man three? Still, like mm-hmm. he, like I've rewatched Great Iron Man three twice, two more times because mm-hmm. he's entertaining. You know, not to keep in mind is he improvises lines like he there's so much that he adds to the movie that it's coming off of his head. It's like you can't take that away from him. It's not like they're writing him to be good. It's like, no, no, he's making it better because whatever they created wasn't good enough. No one's taking anything away from, but I, I Jose is, is Jose is, Jamie Lee Curtis is, and Jamie Lee what Curtis I, is. What I, what I uh, <laughs> held against him to bring down was the the variety of of his filmography after he came back. Has she done a wide variety? Yeah, pretty much her whole, <laughs> whole career. She's done all different types of genre. Yeah, but I mean, he's done a lot of different types of yeah. genres too. So what genre is he missing? He's done everything. Yeah, he's done everything. He was on SNL. 
Yes, it was a was horrible cast, but he was yes. a part of it. And it had Anthony <laughs> Michael Hall in that, but he was you in guys... that. <laughs> okay. Take take away if you take away Iron Man role, discuss his other movies that he's released since he came back. Yeah, but he was so good. You keep talking about the comeback. We gotta talk about the whole, the whole dis- career. Like, yeah. The whole career because well, did Jamie you watch Lee Curtis. Chaplin? Have you seen less yeah. than zero? Have you- <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis hasn't been doing a crazy amount like semi recently. We talk about everything everywhere all at once, but like she's just starting to come back. Like yeah. there was a long gap of her just doing yogurt commercials. No offense again, <laughs> but like they were yogurt commercials. Uh, come on, man. All right. Next one. Yeah. Last and final. Ben Stiller is our number one legacy actor. Parents are Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. He comes from comic gold. I'm not mad that he's number one. I'm just surprised he's number one. I'm just... <laughs> Because he was my number two. He was my number two. I'm surprised how he got dragged to number uh, one. He was, he was all my of number, our number two. two. Yeah. Then how did he, he got make it dragged to down because Robert Downey Jr. was put at number six. Because <laughs> he was both our number one, Dan. I know. That's why I'm like. He got put from number one down to number two. <laughs> you know, he's had a good career. And, you know, he's also moved into the other side of the camera. You know, he had a very successful show on Apple TV. That's uh that was like really good. And he's just he's plates. <laughs> I can't just but... stare at Jose and just say Robert Downey <laughs> says. I'm sorry. That's physically affecting me right now. Like, what? Jamie Lee Curtis is above Damn, him? I've been sitting on this for a couple days now. My <laughs> this is my why wife, I said make my it a wife surprise. was like, what the is Jose talking about? <laughs> How is Jamie Lee Curtis above Robert Downey Jr.? Like, I can't wrap my head around that. Explain it. Not... Your only argument was the one character. That is not our only it's argument. No, we have a lot of arguments. That's your argument. It's You're career. saying we played the same character for 20 years. I'm like, we're talking about his whole 80s. Like, he had a long run of movies. Like, what are you talking And his movie, even though Open Hyper is new, that performance is better than anything that I've seen she's done in any movie she's ever done. He's the better yeah. actor. Well, like, when I, what are I, we talking I have, about? I have not seen Oppenheimer, so that did not go into account when uh, making this We list. could tell. Well, I guess that's not fair. Well, I guess <laughs> yeah, like, That's the best acting I've seen from him ever, uh, which says a lot because the guy can freaking act. Yeah. Um, he can. Her, he can. Again, she's really good, but like I haven't seen anything on that level. Ben Stiller. Um, <laughs> I had him a second. Like We talked about the legacy and all that stuff but it's the fact that his acting of course he's had so many great projects under his belt it's the directing the directing is huge he's had so many iconic characters i loved him in heavyweights <laughs> like he was great in that he was great in dodgeball like he plays the ultimate perfect villain because like you just like laugh at it even the ben stiller show if you guys ever saw that oh, on mtv yeah. yes. he was great in that like um tropic thunder obviously um, you know, the whole meet the fuckers and everything, meet the parents, Watch like all, the, the all that, man. Watch. He is so Zoolander, many things. Man. Yeah, like it, it's like arguable, like with him and like Will Ferrell, you know, like all the different characters that they had and like the memorable ones. Ben Stiller is like right up there for people that think it's so easily Will Ferrell. I don't know. Ben Stiller has uh, a lot of memorable. I will put him in because I never got tired of Ben Stiller. I got tired yeah. of Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. Even movies like Along Came Polly that aren't regarded as some as like like some of his other ones, he's still really good in that movie. <laughs> like, and of course, there's something about Mary. Yeah. He is so good in that movie. Yeah, That's and Tropic Thunder. Thunder with the number six guy. Yeah, playing a different character from us. Yes. Our- <laughs> playing a different character who's playing a different character. Yeah. He's the so only meta. dude who can be a black dude and not get in trouble for it. Yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So yeah, Ben Come Stiller, on, okay. he was my number two also. Mm. <laughs> and for, for the obvious reasons, like he's he's a triple threat. The dude's an mm. actor, a director, a writer, and he's been doing it since he was a, a young guy. Since the 80s, like late 80s, early 90s. He's been doing wearing all three hats and perfecting it along the way. Like I've never seen him do something that was bad. That's why I'm not totally upset that he's at number one because it's like There's you know one, what envy envy movie envy with Jack Black. If you want to see a dud, go okay, watch. Yeah, that I movie. watched that. Yeah, I did watch that. <laughs> <laughs> you buried it and you I forgot t- about it. I did. I totally forgot about it. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Okay, there's at Other least one that, movie that I've seen that it wasn't that good. But hey, we can't all be perfect. Yeah, he's exactly. close to it. He's- yes. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, there's not many people in the business that can take on all three roles. And prove that they belong in all three roles. Mm-hmm. Many people try to do a little bit of everything, but it doesn't always work out. 
-hmm. he equally shines in each position. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a big deal. So, like, number one is very reasonable for him to be there. Thank you for watching another episode of Not a Strong Start. Please like, subscribe, comment, share on our YouTube channel, Not a Strong Start. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter, Not a Strong Start. I'm your host. Thank you. I'm next. Follow me at King underscore Sangre. I am not your host. You ain't my dad. You can find me at <laughs> This Is Me Nombre on Instagram. And I'm your other guy, Junior Superstar. And you can follow me at Nicolopolis. Ah!